AI avatar influencers are everywhere these days. And for the most part, people don't even realize that they're looking at photos or videos of people that they don't really exist other than a prompt in some AI video generation platform. And the key here is to achieve character consistency. And there are platforms that are better suited for corporate and professional work. And there are other platforms that are more suited for social media, UGC, and general content creation. And to get your very own AI avatar that can generate tons of views and potentially a lot of money, all you need is to follow five steps. And the first and most important step is to actually create the face of your avatar. And this is OpenArt's platform. And the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna come to image and you wanna select the right model. And most people will tell you that you need to go with Flax Pro or Flax Dev or any other Flax models. And that's not the model that I recommend. I recommend that you use this one, Juggernaut XL, okay? We're gonna choose that one and we're gonna start training our model. And the reason why I don't recommend Flax Pro or Flax Dev or any of the Flax models, despite the fact that they give you really good images, is because they look too plastic. No matter what setting you apply, whereas the model that I'm suggesting to you gives you realistic images to start with, because that's what you want. You want to create an AI avatar that looks realistic because you can apply makeup and make them look as plastic fantastic as you want but you want to start from a face or a body that looks human, that looks realistic. Because if your starting image is already an image that looks too polished and too plastic fantastic, as I call it, you are limiting yourself to just have a range of images and you want to be able to create any image whatsoever. If I enter a prompt, which is 25 year old woman, brunette, blue eyes, skin, the basic prompt, this is the image that Flax Pro gives me, okay? That one, that one, that one. And as you can clearly see, it looks great, don't get me wrong, but this is not a realistic looking woman, okay? It looks fake. That's what you want. You want this level of realism. And these are the settings that I've used. And as you can clearly see, I've chosen a photorealistic portrait with the Juggernaut XL. This is the prompt that I've used. And what is great about this model is that it allows you to have a negative prompt, which is really, really important. And you want to make sure that your prompt adherence is right down to two. You don't want it to be three and a half as the default is number two. And there are a few things that you can do here, but I'll show you later in the video. You want to stick to the default or one by one. And one thing that is really important is you want to make sure that the steps are 49, okay? Usually they default to 25. You want to make sure that they are around 49. They're going to give you the best results. And let me show you the difference between running the prompt adherence, okay? So look, you can clearly see here, this is the number two, okay? That's very realistic, okay? But we're going to start going up. This is number three. You start to see a little bit of shiny in the face. Four, five. Look, what's the adherence for this? This is six already. And you can clearly see that this is beginning to look fake, okay? I mean, she does look beautiful, I give you that, but that's beginning to look too plastic fantastic, too unrealistic, okay? And this one is eight. And as you can clearly see, things are only gonna get worse. So yes, you get someone that looks like they have professional work done, makeup and everything, but you don't want to start with an image like that. You want to start with a fresh image like this, for instance. This is right down to two. And what is important at this moment in time is that you don't want to be paying attention to the body and the features. You want to get the face right, okay? The right hair and the right facial features. So you eventually arrive to your desired look. I did many, many different images until I eventually settled for this. Now, once you arrive to the face that you like, what is really, really important is you download this image and then you upscale it. You need to think of this as garbage in, garbage out, or quality in, quality out. The better or the higher quality image you feed the engine, 
the better the output is going to be. OpenArt gives you several ways to upscale an image. You can either do it through here directly onto the model, or you can have the ultimate upscale. Fast is going to slightly change the face. The ultra is going to upscale accurately. Refine upscale is going to give you a slightly different face. And then creative upscale is going to change completely the, the face of the person that you're upscaling. This is also an option to find your face because there is no magic formula that says, if you do this, you're gonna arrive to the face of the avatar that you want. You just have to try and experiment. So this is the AI avatar that I decided to settle on. And I just created a number of images with her looking in different poses and different angles. And I fed that model to open art. So I then created this model. And this is when things started to get really interesting because this is, in my opinion, a much better way to create your images. So you just press create and now you have a model, okay? You don't need to include the name of the character, nothing. It goes direct onto creating images. And let me show you the quality of the images that I got. To arrive to this image, I had to do image to image. This is the reference image that I got. And in open art, I basically, all I did was come to image to image, ingest this image, and I tell it to generate me a prompt, okay? And it's gonna eventually gonna populate this window. It's thinking about it. So it has populated the window and then I give it a negative prompt that I have already got from ChatGPT. I leave a document in the video description where I give you some of these prompts so that you can do this yourself. And I copy this, uh, the negative prompt, I, I put it there. I do the CFG or the prompt adherence down to two. This one, I leave it on 0.75. You can play around between 0.6 all the way up to one until it's up to you. I leave it on default so that it defaults to the size of the image and the steps, I bring them to 49. And then I hit create. And you're gonna get a lot of different results. And some of them look better than others. See, look good. That looks realistic, but that doesn't look realistic until eventually you arrive to this image that looks very similar to that one. Not quite the same, but similar, good enough so that I can then animate that. And the things that you can do with this technology is absolutely insane. <laughs> also have tools like Google Nano Banana or Seadance 4 to generate more images from your initial image in different perspectives. This is a great workflow because you can get different angles while keeping consistency in the look, clothing, location and character. I call them image regeneration rather than generation because they work best for editing images that have already been created rather than giving you amazing original images. We feel using open art to generate your initial images and then either Nano Banana or Cedence 4 to give you different angles seems to be the best workflow. Another thing that you can do is you can go to ChatGPT once you have trained your model, you can ask him, you know, okay, well, give me nine crazy unusual locations that anyone would go, wow. And one of them was an infinity pool. So you literally just copy this and we've trained our model. So we come here, we paste this, we use the same negative prompt. We don't need that because we're not using image to image. We keep this down to two, uh, 49, and then look, we hit uh, render and then we play a little bit with this. Let's bring it down to nearly 1.9 and 
all of them are pretty much going to look great. Then obviously you need to choose whether there is an image where the fingers or the feet look right, the body position and all of that. That's right down to you to decide. But the images that you're going to get are going to be absolutely stunning. Okay, so these are the results and look at that. Wow, that looks insane and there are so many things that you can do with this platform that is impossible to cover in a 12 or 15 minute video and for this i have an ai avatar course that is going to teach you everything that you need to know to get your very own ai avatar or ai avatars i literally teach you step by step the entire process whether it's from scratch from an image reference, whether you want to create your very own clone, how to animate your avatars, how to create perfect lip sync. So I'll leave a link in the video description below that you can click on it and purchase the course. This is nothing compared to what you can do with this technology. It's absolutely insane. And like I said, it would be impossible to fit all of this in 10 or 15 minutes. So this is how you create your digital AI avatar that looks absolutely amazing. And obviously I've used 16 by nine aspect ratio. You would choose nine by 16 or one to one, whichever goes for what it is that you want to do. But the image quality is going to be absolutely amazing. The animation is going to look absolutely insane. And if you're wondering, what do I do now for voice and lip sync? How do I go about this? Well, I've done this video here where I show you literally how to do it step by step. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, that you found it interesting. If you did, give the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in the next one.